My name is Andrew Brandstetter, and I'll be a senior at Solon High School. This summer, I was a radiology intern at South Point Hospital, and my mentors were J.E. Ball and Cynthia Lewis. My project is customer service and satisfaction in radiology. Patient satisfaction is a key issue right now in the healthcare industry. There's a difference between the quality of care and the perception of care that the patients perceive, so it's important that the employees bump up that quality of care to receive the highest marks on patient satisfaction scores. There's also a lack of uniformity among publications. For example, Press Ganey and HCAPS are both releasing publications with different results. And some hospitals are giving monetary incentives in the form of Medicare aid in order to increase accountability and self-improvement among employees. There are five factors to satisfaction. Reliability or the dependability of the employees, the responsiveness or timeliness, assurance, which is the competence to provide the care that the employees um, promise to provide to the patient, empathy or caring, and the tangibles, such as the cleanliness. Cleveland Clinic is currently ranked the fourth best hospital nationally and is ranked in the top 10 nationally in 14 of 16 specialties. However, Cleveland Clinic is below average satisfaction. In the HCAPS topics, Cleveland Clinic is ranked below the national average in seven of 10. South Point Hospital, where I was located, is a community hospital, which means that it provides outpatient services in an inpatient setting. And South Point Radiology is composed of X-ray, CT, MRI, nuclear medicine, ultrasound, and mammography. The bottom line is that healthcare is a business and happy patients or customers do come back. Last summer, there was a project done by another intern on surveys in radiology, and the results from that data was used to make changes to the hospital as well as the radiology department. In regards to the radiology department, a greeter was added in order to greet the patients as well as collect paperwork and help make their experience faster and more clean. And in regards to the hospital as a whole, the Cleveland Clinic experience was created in the past year, and this advocates and emphasizes um, putting the patients first and every employee's role as a caregiver. The problem is that the current data gives an overview of the hospital, but it's not broken down into specific departments such as um, ICU, ED, radiology, so it's each specific department's responsibility. And also a secondary study is needed to identify problems to focus on. The purpose of this data is to assess satisfaction in South Point outpatient radiology services, also to compare the results to the 2010 study done last year, as well as to identify areas of improvement and correlate by the specific sub-departments within radiology. In order to do this project, survey cards were distributed randomly to outpatients over five weeks by either myself or the greeter at the front desk. And on this survey card, there's a place to rank from one to five the quality of service at the check-in desk, imaging technologist, and phone scheduling, as well as the overall experience. There's also areas to rank to say if the waiting area and the exam room was clean, yes or no, as well as if the patient was examined in a timely manner. And there's also an additional optional area on the back for comments and their name, but everything on this is completely optional. My hypotheses with this project were that patients will be overall satisfied with scores above a three, hopefully above a four. Scores would be slightly higher than last year because of the changes made, and also there would be issues with timeliness because that was a big area for improvement from last year. As you can see from the graphs, the far left, or the black in each graph, is the average of the whole department. And so to overall, there was an average of 4.53 out of 5, which is a very high score. And you can see that nuclear medicine and CT are consistently the lowest among every category. And in regards to cleanliness of the waiting area exam room and the timeliness on the bottom three graphs, you can see that the radiology department received very high marks in every sub-department except for mammography with timeliness. And these graphs show the difference between last year's data and this year's, with the green being 2010, blue being 2011. In the top four, there was a slight decrease in scores from last year to this year, but at most, the difference was about a .05 drop, so it's a very marginal difference. And on a positive note, in the timeliness category, radiology improved 4%, which is a great, great improvement. And on the back area for comments, I analyzed if the comments were negative or positive. And so out of the positive comments, there was a lot of praise given to the staff. And in regards to negative, there was a lot of criticism about the timeliness. So it shows that time is still a big issue with the patients and that there's a lot of area for improvement. Throughout this 
summer, I was also acting as a little secret spy in the radiology department, observing everything that I witnessed. And what I've noticed is that the patients in the waiting area are extremely overwhelmingly pleased with the greeter and that um, none of them seem to be bored or waiting for a very long time. And phone scheduling, which receives some, some low scores, it's controlled by a hospital-wide system. And so radiology is not in control of that, so they can't do much about it. Nuclear medicine and CT, which have the lowest scores overall, uh, they have these necessary waiting times when patients must ingest contrast to get IVs. So that slows down the time, that, or adds time to the patient's experience, which can hence lower their satisfaction scores. And also, once patients are informed of the delays as a result of ED or ICU patients being rushed down, most of them are very understanding. Some possible sources of error in my experiment are outliers. For example, CT, um, there was one patient that gave a score of a 1 when the rest gave a 5, but this made the scores plummet. There's improper completion of the survey cards, as in examples on the right. And uh, also difference in perception of people. If someone's having a bad day, they're going to give a lower score on the per satisfaction. Also a non-response rate, because if, if it's a patient's second or third time visiting, they're not going to fill out another survey, even though their experience might have been different. Overall, patients are largely satisfied in radiology. As I said, there was a 4.53 out of 5 average score, which is slightly lower than last year's 4.55, but only by 0.02, which is almost nothing. The department, the specific sub-department, does affect the scores, except for in the cleanliness and timeliness areas, where almost every single department received 100% in cleanliness and timeliness. However, due to the small sample size of only 51 surveys, it's hard to conclude a difference in the overall satisfaction from this year to last year, because last year's um, study was almost 1,500 patients, and this year's was 51. So this year's was more observational and less statistics, whereas last year's was more statistics. And still, the key issues are phone scheduling and timeliness, as revealed by the comments on the back. For future satisfaction studies, it would be very beneficial if there was a longer time frame utilized, because this would allow a larger sample size and more statistically significant data, as well as if a sufficient amount of surveys from each department could be collected. And also, if the words disappointing and outstanding were moved more towards more above the 1 and above the 5, respectively, that would increase patient comprehension. In regards to the department, it's important that radiology continues enhancing the communication between phone scheduling and also between departments, as well as between the patients and letting them know about the delays as a result, direct result of emergency patients being rushed over. And also, it's key to never give unreasonable time estimates. References. I would like to give a big thank you to my mentor, J.E. Ball, and co-mentors Cynthia Lewis and Kelly Laporto, as well as my co-coordinators Linda Pasek and Carol Weber, as well as the Office of C Civic Education Initiatives and Rosalind Strickland and Nedra Starling. Thank you.